welcome back all of you nana here and then we are into the next day session on this uh, supplier qualification management so let me go on and share my screen so i go to the procurement and then i click on the supplier qualification so we have already created three of the questions thank you on it we have not done it and then we have to create six more questions you click on it and then go to the manage questions and then we copy from the mission on and then into my business unit actually go there and then if we go and then query my questions on starting on a01 and then make a search now to not show you display all the things whatever i have to do these are the three questions we have created now code of conduct is a very important one it is is the mandatory one for every company actually mm -hmm. And then uh, that will be replayed back by the supplier. And then uh, the compliance review will be done by the internal responder. The internal responder is going to review it. And then he will be giving his suggestion. Actually. So these two things are really, very important. And then it is invariably will be there in every company. Actually. So let us go there. And then we will now what I'm go ahead on this now. I will now go to the Excel sheet. I will now open the procurement worksheet now. Fine. <coughs> So now we are going to create the remaining balance six questions. Let me go there. So let us now create the balance six questions on this. So six more questions has to be created now. Fine. What is the PC? Fine. Is the SQM actually? Supply qualification. So we have done the code of conduct. We have done the compliance review. We have disclosed the financial input. Now, we are now going to have a public company. Are you a public company or not? We are going to ask. So, we are not taking a copy of it. And then we will not query for you. Now, go there. Click on it. Now, click on download. And again, go to the questions. Now, if I click on the questions area, go to the manage questions, and then we will now query this. You are going to query it now. So, go to the questions. Now, if I click on the questions, and then remove the owner because Calvin Roth is the owner for it now. Fine. Click on search. If you search for it, it will not show you the questions. Fine. Calvin Roth is the one actually. So you select it and then duplicate it. Fine, we are going to duplicate it. Fine, we are going to duplicate it. So we are going to duplicate it. Fine, the person I'm going to duplicate it. So we are now duplicating it and then we will now write with our prefix actually. And then paste this. This is the one. So, go there. so here we have a branching now. Okay? Conditional branching is there. So are you, if your business is a public company or not? So if he is not, if he's saying no to it now, the supplier is going to say, no, we are not a public company. Then what happens? He has to give one more question now. There will be a question the branching now. Fine, click on the branch now. Fine, click on the branch. So click on the branch here. What happens? Disclose the financial link. If you are not a public company, we have disclosed the financial link. That is what is. <laughs> so what I do is what we will now first of all delete this and then what happens? We make a new one now. Fine, click on that. <laughs> In the branching, you can see now. You can see in the branching. What happens? If he's saying no, he has to disclose the financial info. Let us know, edit and then do it now. Fine, click on it now. So click on edit. Fine, click on edit. In the edit, what happens? You go there. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then we'll now add now. Fine, click on it. So click on plus now. Fine, go there. So disclose the financial info. Fine. I will now say A01. Fine. I will now say this. And then click on search. Fine, click on search. Easy to one disclose financial info the one fine. Click on apply and then click on okay. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake actually. Thank you. I cancel not fine. So I made a mistake actually. So what I did is uh, what happens? I kept my cursor on the yes side. So, so keep your cursor on the no and then do the edit. Now click on it. Keep your cursor on the no and then click on edit. Fine, click on edit. So keep your cursor on the no and then edit. So it is we already have a what happens one now fine. So let us now delete this now fine. Click on it and then delete it and then add ours. And click on delete and then we're going to add now. Can go to actions and then go to select and add. We're going to add ours. We'll go there. I'll say it is A01 underscore disclosure. And then make a search now and give it up. Select from the left hand side and then click on apply and then click on OK. By which what happens? We are now adding this now. Click on OK. It is not done. So if you go to the question branching, you can now see it will now branch to our A01 disclose financial info and not the generic one actually. So if he's saying I'm not a public company, then he has to disclose his financial information. Fine, click on that. That is what it is. 
So we have made a modification of the branching also. I go there. I will not activate it and then I will not save it actually. And nothing else is required now. And there's no remaining. You keep it as such. No point. So click on activate. So click on save first of all. You are now saving it. And then click on activate. It is now a draft stage. So I click on activate. It will now become active actually. So click on OK. No point. Not active. <laughs> and then go there. So click on done. And then what happens? You go there. And then what happens? You go there. Query for the A01. Fine. Now we will have four questions available. No fine, click on search. No, no fine, four questions available. So go there. Public company is also available. So all of them are active actually. So we are now done four questions now. And now go there for first. Okay. Next is the employee count. So you go there, take a copy of it. Employee count, we are going to go there. No fine, click on it. I will now make a search for the employee count. The employee count, I'm making a search. No fine, owner is a blank one. Fine, make a search. No, no, that. So go there. So click on duplicate it. Now I'm not going to duplicate it. We are duplicating it. Then go there. Click on it. A zero one underscore and paste it. They're not coming. I'll go back. That's all right. So he will not say how many employees are there. Fine, hundred to five hundred or what up to hundred. So depending upon that, the supplier is going to respond back. Fine, what else? So nothing to be done on this. Fine, that count. Everything is okay. Fine, go there. So click on save and then we are now activated. So the employee count is now getting activated. Fine, click on activate. So by which whatever is now getting activated. So it is now activated. Now click on it. And then problem is not done. So it's now activated. <laughs> Go there, on it. Next is what? CFI. Fine. Current financial year revenue. So we are going to say what is the current financial year revenue? Fine. Go there. I will now go there. And then query for this now. Fine. Current financial year revenue. Fine. Click on search. And then duplicate it. Fine. Click on duplicate. We are going to duplicate it. So go there. I will now say it's a zero one underscore CFI revenue. You know. So go there, click on it. And then here, what happens? You know, say you're not giving estimate your current revenue for uh, expected revenue for the current financial year. And the lower house. So the one now fine. It is a map to a supplier attribute. Fine, current financial year's potential revenue. Fine, there is a one. So that we are going to map it actually. Fine. It is now getting mapped also. Map to a supplier attribute. So we have a map, we have attribute actually, fine. It's now getting mapped actually. It's okay, fine. Go there. Uh, custom text. Everything will be coming automatically on this. No, fine. Click on it. And then go there. So click on save. See if I revenue there. Fine. Click on it. And then go there. So go there. Click on activate now. So we are going to activate it. Fine. S01C of I revenue. Fine. Click on activate. So we are activating it. So by which what happens is not done. C of I revenue is now activated. Next is what? The remaining three is automatic scoring actually. So once when the financial, once when the supplier is going to give a, what happens on the environmental sustainability, which is going to be a, what's called a green initiative. We call them as a green initiative. So once when he's answering it, what happens, these three courses will now form part of the green initiative actually. And then the, what happens, the outcome is going to be automatic. So normally what happens, the environmental sustainability, it will be automatic. So the SQM admin or the internal responders cannot even touch it at all. The system will be giving the marks automatically based upon the supplier's response, actually. So go there. So I'll now go there. I will now go to ISO 14001 certification. It is auto scoring, actually. The scoring is going to be automatic. Fine, go there. I will now take a copy of it. I'll now query it. They're all going to be automatic now. Fine, go there. So paste it now. So go on and search for it. Fine, click on search. Go there. I will not duplicate it. Fine, click on duplicate it. We're not duplicating it. Fine, go there. So I will now say is what? Question is what? A01 underscore. Fine, go there. <laughs> Go to this place, thank you. No, 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 go back, click on it. So, here, what I was, you will not say yes or in process or no. So, if you're saying what I was, if you is IS 14001 certification is now full, fine, response text is full, then what I was, you'll be getting 100% of whatever may be the score which is going to be allocated. So, if it is in process now, what happens now in my case, what happens, he is not saying it is in process. So, he will get only 25% of marks. So, when I am creating this, what happens? Uh, my environmental sustainability for the ISO certification, I am going to give a weightage of 70% actually. So this will be having 100% weightage actually. Fine. For the three courses now, this will have a 70% weightage. This will be having a 20% weightage. This will be having a 10% weightage actually. So 70% weightage. And then here, he is now going to answer, answer as what? what am I, in process now. So 25% of 70. <clears throat> How much it is now? Fine. Approximately. 17 point something you will not get as a mark actually. So that will <laughs> be the mark you will be getting it now. <laughs> so the supplier is going to respond in my case 
as what happens. This certification is in process. Actually, it is not in obtained action. You know, what to say in process. So the system automatically gives a mark. The marks will be given automatically by the system actually. So the actual one. So everything is there, thank you, fine. So accepted response or not? Yes, in process or no, no, fine. There is only accepted response or nothing else is there, thank you, it. Go that you want it, fine. And then uh, given it, now, fine. And then give a save and then activate it, now, fine. This is the automatic scoring, now, fine. So the scoring is going to be automatic, remember. Every other day is not automatic. This, these three courses are only automatic scoring, actually. Fine, click on save. And then we will now activate it, fine. Click on activate it. So we're going to activate it. So it becomes active, now, fine, it. The question was activated. So we have now made these three questions as already. Forbes sustainability. We'll not take a copy of it. We'll not go to the Forbes sustainability. We'll not paste it. Nothing. Click on it. Paste it. Forbes sustainability is fine. So click on search. We're going to search for it. We want it. And then duplicate it. Click on duplicate. Go there. You'll not say what I was there. A01 underscore. What I was there. Paste it now. Now give me nothing. Here, this is also scoring is automatic actually. So we are going yes or no only. Fine. Yes is 100%. No means what? No. So it must be what happens if your company recognized by Forbes or not. Fine. If it says no, for the 20% weightage, what happens? You'll be getting zero marks actually. So the first one has got a 70% weightage. The sixth one is going to be 20% weightage. So we will now give only yes, no. Fine. You'll now get 20 marks per. That's what I want. So click on save and then activate it. <laughs> so click on save and then we're going to activate it. Click on activate. So the Forbes sustainability is activated now. Click on it. We'll not go for the third one now. Click on it. So the third one is what? Office recycling now. Fine. So take a copy of it and then go to office recycling. Paste it now. Fine. Click on office recycling. Fine. Click on search. Office recycling. So we're going to work for search now. I will not duplicate it. Fine. Click on duplicate. And then go there and go there. Click on it. The A01. Fine. Go there. Is the office recycling. Fine. Click on it. Office is a clean. And that was that is what is again automatic scoring of angle on it. So uh, what percentage of your office of comprehensive employee waste recycling on and, and then uh, composition available no? composting available now? So this is having a 10% weightage now fine, depending upon whatever 100% whatever it is now, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he will not say 100 percent So you will not get a 10% weightage actually. <laughs> that much only we are going to answer the supply will say 100 percent so you'll now get what happens that 10 percent marks for this so click on it and then click on save and then what happens activating so we are activating what happens the final question also so all the what happens all the nine courses are now completed Thank click on it and then go there and then i will now query on a01 and then make a count of whether we having all the nine courses there in the place now Thank click on search now fine you cannot see what happens one rende mune nale Anji, R, Yeri, it to Umbode. Fine, all the nine are there. So we have all the nine in place. They are all active actually. Fine, everything is active. Fine, all the nine questions are there. So everything is active. Fine. So question preparation is now complete. So yesterday itself, I told you what we go to the manage questions and do it now. Fine, take one at. Okay, fine. Now what happens? We are now completed all the questions now. Fine, we'll now go there for the next time. Okay. Don't go there. No, go on and do the next activity on this. <laughs> go there. Click on it. So now, having created all the questions now, fine. We have now taken some nine questions in random from the system one, fine. And then we have now copied them into our fine. And then they did. Now, what happens? Is we are now going to go to the qualification area now, fine. We are now going to create three qualification area. Every qualification area will have an outcome, fine. The first one, which is a environmental sustainability, it is also known as a green initiative. And then this will be having an automatic outcome. Right? Here, none of them, either the SQM admin or the internal responder cannot even touch it at all. Right? It will be giving an output automatically. Right? Every company will be having this one, any normal sustainability. So it will be automatic actually. The financial viability and then the compliance are manual actually. Right? They're all manual. So they will all be internally done by our employees actually. Right? By which what happens? The outcome will be done actually. So outcome will be done by our employees, either by the Internal responder or by the SQM admin actually, and depending upon the so normally compliance will be given by the internal responder, and then the financial viability will be done by the SQM admin actually. Fine, they will be giving an outcome. Fine, so the outcome of the QA, fine QA will be given manually by our employees, whereas this is automatic. 
So let us go there and then create our what happens the, the qualification areas. Now fine, go there. I will not take a copy, friend. So go on and take a copy. I will now go there and then create our what happens the, the qualification areas. Now fine, click on it. So having created the questions, now fine, we will now go to the manage qualification areas. Fine. Click on the manage qualification areas. And now we are now going to create our qualification area. Fine. So paste, now fine, click on paste. And then click on search, now fine, click on search. We are now searching for it. So existing one, again, what happens? They remove the owner and then search for it. So owner is Calvin Roth, fine, click on search. And then we will now copy the owners on this one, fine, and then copy into ours, now fine, click on it. So go there. And then click on duplicate, now fine. We are going to duplicate the existing one. We are not duplicating the environmental sustainability, fine, go there. I will now put my name over there, now fine, A01 underscore, and then paste it. Now. And then remember, all the QAs will be expiring over a period of time, actually. So this is you have to design. Tell them after 30 days it will expire, and then again, what happens? It has to again be evaluated actually. And then a new outcome will be done. Fine. After 30 days, what happens? This environmental sustainability has to be again evaluated, and then a new outcome will be coming actually. Fine. So all QEAs will have an expiry date. That is what. And then do not touch any of these things. Now fine. So the default qualification owner is Calvin Roth. Now fine. So and then owner is there. The default one, if you remove it. And then if you put my EMP1, it will not come at all. EMP1, if you go there, try to put it, it will not come at all. But if you put on the left-hand side, the owning BU, it will come. Not coming. So go there, drop down, and then choose my BU. Then the EMP1 will come. EMP1. <laughs> if you put it, then it will come. So once when the BU is done, then what happens? The default qualification owner will be coming. So the owner is there. The default qualification owner is there. The procurement BU is there. And then what happens? You give a save. And then in reality, what happens is the number of days, expiration date, you have to adjust it accordingly. <laughs> As per the inclines requirement. <laughs> 15 days or 30 days or 60 days or whatever it is, you have to adjust it. Having that. It's basically known as a green initiative, actually. And then this is a must in every company and then it's going to be automatic, actually. It is the environmental sustainability, actually. And then we have now randomly created some, uh, uh, what happens, uh, the qualification areas questions, actually. But in reality, it will all be very relevant actually to the industry actually. Now we go to the next tab within and then have a look at the questions now. Right? Click on it. Go to the next one. So go there, click on it. So they have one ISO certification there. Fine. Let us now introduce mine now. Fine. Click on it. And then let me add now. Fine. Click on it. So click on add. So let me add mine now. Go there. I will not say it's a A01. Fine. I will not say ISO. And then make a search. So click on search now. Fine. It will be coming. I will now select it and then click on apply and then click on OK. That is now getting added. So this is of what? 70%. 70 70% 70 70 is weight now. 70% is weight now. Fine. Click on it. So he will now get what happens. In process means what? He will be getting only 25% ranking. So if you go to the calculator. Fine. CALC. Calculator if you go there. So we will now see what happens. 70 fine, percentage. Fine. Uh, 0.25. Go there. Right? So you'll get a 17.5 ranking. So once when the supplier says that it is in process, the ISO certification is in process, you will not get a weightage, you will not get a score of 17.5 now. Fine. Well. On this one, 17.5. I will not delete this one now. Fine. This one I will not go there and then delete it. Fine. So click on X now. Fine. That is getting deleted. So here, what happens? You go there and then what happens? You change it to 10 now. Fine. Well. I will not go there. I will not change it to 10. Fine. No change it to 10 now. So go there, click on save now. So as and when you keep on adding it, what happens? They give a chain. Now unique constraint is coming from that. So here I will not tell you what is the problem now. <laughs> you go there and then make it as 40 now. And then give a save now. Fine, click on save. It will not save. Fine, it is not coming as 40. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> now you go and then make a change to 10, it will accept. Some bakar here. Fine, you we'll make it as 10, fine, it will not save. So now it will accept it. So initially give uh, anything which is beyond the uh, 10, 20, 30, and then afterwards bring it back to 10 now. The force sustainability, fine, that. so whether this company is recognized by the Forbes or not, it's a very important one, fine. And then got a weightage of 20 actually, fine, go that. So go that. We'll not add our stuff, fine. Click on plus and then it does not add our stuff. So say it's the A01, fine. The Forbes, four. And then click on search, now fine. We already have it, now fine. Select it. And then uh, click on apply and then click on okay by which whatever they're not getting added. So A01, hope sustainability is added now fine. It's not coming as 40 now fine. It's okay. And then here whatever they'll not make the weight as 20. 20 there. And then I will not delete this one now. Fine. Click on it. Now go there. So click on delete. 
it is not illegal. <laughs> so what happens? 20 is already there. So now what happens? If you go there and then save, it will save you now because now we are given as only as 40 and 50. It will not save. Now what happens? You go there and then make a change to 20, it will accept it. <laughs> go there and then go there. Uh, no, make it as about 20. And then click on save. Now it will accept. Enough. So first of all, delete and then save. And then afterwards, change the numbering and then save. Now office is a click. And then go there. And then it will not add nothing. Click on plus nothing. It will not add hours nothing. It's about A01. So now say office. And then click on search now. It will not show you the one available for this. Office recycling. So click on apply and then click on OK by which what happened. The office recycling is applied now. And then go there. And then you will know office recycling has come as 40 now. The third year, let us not delete. Go there. And then delete it and then save it again. So this office recycling will be having what? A value of 10 actually. 10%. 10 weightage is 10. So all the weights put together must be 100. Now click on save. At this time, it will not save. Now what happens? You go there. Office recycling can change it to 30 now. Go there. So I'm not changing it already. So click on save. So in my case, when the supplier is going to respond, the ISO certification, he will now say it is in progress now. So he will get a 17.5 weight. In the Forbes sustainability list, he will now say, yes, it is fully sustainable. And then it is already available on the Forbes. And so what happens, he will get it only marks. And then office recycling, he will now say, yes, we are now recycling. And then he will now get 10. So 17.5 plus 20 plus 10. How much it is? Fine. 30 is the one, 40 is the one. So you'll now get 40 the one 0.5 as the total value. So 40 the one 0.5 comes under what? Average. <coughs> to go there. So it is average actually. Fine. 41 to 59 is average actually. So the system will now give an average, uh, what happens, the ranking for the environmental sustainability actually. So once when you give it, what happens, these three values you'll now give. So you'll be responding it what? <coughs> as what? In process, yes, yes, you will not get an average. Now. <coughs> the outcome of that, what I mean, the qualification area is average actually. Because 41 to 59 is average actually. So likewise, what happens, you have to frame the questions in the field actually. So this is only fictitious, we are doing it now. In reality, you have to discuss with the end client and then which one is very good for your environment now. Right? So it is a green initiative and then you have to do it now. Fine for that. <laughs> So you may have some certain certifications which the supplier has to have now fine. So only when you have it, what happens you'll be doing it now? Fine what else? So go there, click on it. And then here we are not done everything now. Fine, click on it. And then go there. And then go to the main area and then have a look at it now. Fine, click on it. It is a 30 days expiry now. Fine, click on it. And then go there. Everything is okay. Fine. Click on save and close. So the first QA is now made with the automatic output. The changes are saved. No, no, no. You'll not go there. You will not query the second one, financial viability. So you're not taking all weight. Financial viability is the one. That is the second QA now. Fine, click on it. I will not go on and query it. You'll not go to the financial viability. Fine, click on search. So we are searching for the financial viability. I will not duplicate it. Fine, click on duplicate. Let me duplicate it. And then here, what am I going to put? A01. Underscore. And then I will not paste it. Now. So that's what it. <laughs> oh, what? The first one, I think I have not, uh, what am I activated it. I'm not very sure about it. Let me go on and do it. So expiration period what happens now coming as zero days, I will not make it as a 30 days. I will not make it as 30 days. Now what happens? You go there. So I will not delete it. And then if I try to put the EMP one, it will not come at all. It will not come. So what do you have to do? You have to first of all put your BO here now, fine, and then do it now. Fine. And then what about the default owner do it? Then afterwards, what happens? You put EMP one, yeah. it will not drop. So the owner is there. The default qualification owner is also there. And so Owning process is also there. Right? Everything is there. The remaining don't touch anything at all because they have now done in a proper manner all the tick marks. Now, fine. Later on, you can even change the tick marks and then see how it's behaving actually. But first exercise, you do it exactly as per the. And then go to the next one. Now, fine. Click on it. The next one. Second one. Go there. So, go there. So, there are so many questions over there. So, let me have only two questions. Now, fine. Go there. So, go there. Click on it. I will not delete all of them. I will not delete it now. So, okay. Go there, click on it. I will not put X mark now. And go there. No, I the X mark. Only two questions I am going to have. So, employee count and this one I am going to have it now. Put the employee count. And then I will not add it now. Click on employee count. I am going to add it now. Go there. I will not say A01. Fine. EMP. And then make a search now. Click on employee count. 
almost all right. In reality, you have to do it exactly as per the record. It's only for a training purpose you're doing it now. So I don't know that. So 10, 30, and then 10, 20, 30, now man. So click on save. Then what happens? Sir? Employee count is there. <laughs> employee count. So what happens? I will not delete the existing employee count. I don't know. So let me delete it. They're not deleted. No. So give a save now, man. Click on save. Now it will not save now. So give a save now, man. Now what happens? I will not change it to 10. I will not change it to 10. Now, if you save, what happens? It will be saving. It will be getting saved. Similarly, so current financial year revenue. Now, thank you. I will not add hours. Now, thank you. I add hours. Suppose that. The A01, C of Y, current financial year revenue. So, current financial year revenue, I am not going to make a search. Now, thank you for search. On the left hand side, go there. So, what happens? Go there. Apply and then click on OK. Now, that is getting added. So, it is not getting added. I will not give a save. And then I will not delete the one now. I click on it. The one I'm going to delete. Click on delete. And then give a save. And then this one will not renumber it. So go there. I will not make it as for 20. 20. And then go there. So click on save. So the outcome of the what happens? This one now. Fine. This is the outcome of this one will be manually given by either the internal responder or the SKM owner actually. Excellent or average, above average or below average. So the one of the people will be giving you a manual outcome of the manual outcome will be coming manual outcome. And then it is not a, the second the qualification here is now completed actually. Fine. Go to the place the first one. And then we are now given the expiration period also. And then I will now activate it. Fine. Click on save. I will now activate it. Fine. Click on activate. So the first one was not activated. Fine. Go to the save and close. Let us now activate the first one. And now go there. So let me query the A01 will now have. Two qualification areas no, against A01. Thank you for search. No, fine. No, fine. Two, one, one, one. So, one is what? The end not to sustain ready. So, you will now select it and then click on edit. No, fine. We have to activate it actually. It is in a draft stage actually. Fine. Click on activate. So, click on activate. The expiration is very important. Fine. Click on it. Then click on save. And then go there. And then make a search. No, fine. Click on search. What happens? You cannot see one is the draft, one is the active. So, now both of them will be active actually. So we will now create the final QA now for our training now. For training, we'll go there. What is the compliance? The compliance is given by the internal responder actually. Okay. We'll now go there and then query the QA. So go to the search now. Find the search, and then the compliance is given by the internal internal responder actually. So click on search now. Find click on search, then go there. So you select it and then click on duplicate now. Find duplicate. Then go to I will now there is the A zero one underscore compliance now. No, no. Again, expiration period, what happens? I will not make it as 30 days now. Right? So, expiration period, I will not make it as 30 days. Right? So, that's one. And then again, what happens? You remove it. <coughs> and then put your BU here. And then afterwards, EMP. EMP1. Then, what happens? Everything is coming. Everything is coming. And remaining, remaining tick marks and all. Leave it as such. No, fine. Click on it. And then don't do anything at all. Fine. You go to the next tab region on this one. So, code of contact and then comply. So the code of conduct we are going to send it to the supplier actually. Let me add my plus. Let me add my so A01. I will not say code of conduct. And then uh, click on search and then I'm going to add mine now. Right? Select it. And then uh, click on apply and then click on OK by which we are not adding ours. <coughs> Give a save now. <coughs> you must provide a value for the weight attribute. So yes, code of attribute will be our 50. <laughs> Click on save now. Now, what happens? You go there and then will not delete you. So, let me delete. Click on delete. Go there. So, go there. Click on save now. And afterwards, what happens? You will not change the numbering. No save. I go there. I will not change it to what 10. 10. So, click on save. Then, compliance review will be given by the internal responder actually. So both of them are going to be automatic actually. Fine. So once when you give the what happens, it will be coming. Fine. The scoring is automatic, but uh, what happens? Uh, the response will be given by the supplier, and then it will be evaluated by the interim person. So click on plus one. So we will now do the compliance review now. Fine. Click on A01. BOM. And then click on search now. Fine. Click on search. And then select it and then click on apply and then click on OK. Which what happens? So the compliance review fine, give us save now. 
We have done it now. We must provide a value. So again, what happens? I'm going to give a value of 50 now. So the one of 50, and then give a save. Now I click on save. And now give an enter. And then afterwards, what happens? Now remove the what? The compliance review. Now I click on it. Delete it. So delete it. And then give a save. Now I click on save. And then this, I will not change it to 20. So click on save now. Code of content and compliance review will be moved on. So now the internal responder will now give output as what? Fully compliant or compliance with exceptions or out of compliance actually. Fine. Output. So if you say it's out of compliance, what happens? It will be a very serious nature actually. But again, this will be honored by the SKM owner actually. The SKM owner will now ultimately decide whether to what happens, knock him off or not in the onboarding process. In the onboarding process, what happens? He will not design it. So, internal responders' job is to what? Give one of the three outputs actually. Based upon the code of conduct, he is now giving you a compliance review. And then, once when the review has been given, the, in, the SQM owner will not design. Fine. I, based upon the compliance review, the output will be coming automatic. Fine. The output will be coming. If there is compliance with exception, the output will be coming 10 or 0 or 3. Fine. Whatever it is. <coughs> so, whatever it is, fine. So, click on it. And then, done. Fine. <laughs> from school to school, fine. Gosh. <clears throat> so, there's a range of schools actually. I will not go to the main area and then I will not activate it. Okay? Click on it. And then click on save and then activate it. So, the third one is also done. Okay? Click on it, activate it, and save and close. Now, maybe. Will not go on and query or easy to one. Okay? So, click on search now. They're searching it. All the three are now ready now. So now all the three qualification areas are now completed now. Click on now. Next is what we are now going to create a model like. So after having created all the qualification areas, we will now create a model like. Your yeah, model will be created. So this is called compliance for sourcing eligibility. So when you are onboarding a supplier, you are now going to see whether he can be put on RFQ or a, there are four sourcing documents are there. RFQ, yeah, RFQ. You are a two stage RFQ, then what happens? You are uh, uh, what's called your uh, RFI and then the reverse option. So there are four, uh, four documents of that. So can we put a supply on the sourcing documents or not? So for which what happens that we are going to see it. <coughs> so on the onboarding process, we will now say whether he is eligible for uh, putting it on a sourcing document. <laughs> we will now go on and create a model actually. <laughs> Click on it. Then now go to what? Manage qualification models. Fine. Click on the manage qualification models. Now go there. Fine. I will now query the model name. Model name. Fine. Compliance for sourcing eligibility. Fine. Click on search. We are going to query for it. So we are now querying for it. Now fine. Employ owner is what? Nothing. And then make a search. Now fine. Click on search. And I'm going to query for it. So go there. Click on it. And then here what I'm going to duplicate it. Fine. Click on duplicate. And then once when you duplicate it, what happens? You'll be getting everything. Fine. What is what? A01. Fine. Underscore. And then paste it. So what is coming? Again, the 30 days is there. Fine. Expiration date. So all the qualification areas and models will be having an expiration date. After every expiration date, what happens? We has to be requalified, actually. He has to be requalified. So here, what happens? If you go there and then try to put my EMP1. EMP1. It will not come at all. Fine. Go there. Even after you put your BU also, it will not come. Even after you put your BU also, what happens? It will not be coming. On a model, it will not come. So what you have to do is, after you put the BU, you give a save now. After you save, it will come now. <sighs> yeah, what happens? You remove it also. Owner is also not coming. Fine for that. So give a save. So after having put the BU, now everything will come now. Fine for that. So in the model, what happens? This is a problem. There, without even saving, it will come now. Fine. Here, only after saving, you will not come. The owner as well as the default owner. Both of them will come. Only after you save, actually. Whereas in a QA, in a qualification area, saving is not a mandatory one. Here, you have to save it actually. Fine, click on save it. So it is not a, So the one procurement view after put it, what happens? You go there, default as an assessment owner, and then what happens? The default owner is also coming. Fine, go there. So these two things will come only after save actually. Whereas in a QA, no need to save, it will be coming. Once when you put the BU, it will be coming. Here, yeah, after you put the BU and then save, then only it will come. So go there, click on that next one. Fine, click on it. Go there. Your model will be having what? The compliance actually. 
So let us now introduce our compliance compliance map and click on it. Click on plus now. So we are going to introduce our compliance map and go there. Go on. It's the A01 underscore compliance. COM and then make a search and apply and click on search. You know, choosing our search and select it. And then click on apply and then click on OK. Now fine, click on OK. You do not have and go there. So give a save now at this stage, give a save. And then what happens? You cannot provide the file. The weight is required. I will not say 100%. 100%. And then give a save. I click on it. So we are not saving it actually. Thank you. Not save. No doubt. And then here, what happens? You go there and then delete it now. Thank you. Not I'm going to delete it. So click on X now. Fine. You are not deleting the existing. And then give a save. Thank you. Not save. Now, what happens? You change the number. So this will be evaluated by the SQM owner actually. The SQM owner will be giving the model output actually. Model output will be given by the SQM output. So you will not say five star. He can be put in any document. Right? If he is giving what avoid, do not use, what happens? Uh, you cannot put him on a sourcing document at all. <clears throat> what happens? Uh, not eligible for a sourcing document. That means what? This supplier, if you put what happens, this one now, right? zero to eight, he's giving it. So the supplier cannot be put on any of the sourcing documents like RFU. RFQ, two stage RFQ, RFA, and then the reverse auction, you cannot put it on. If you try to put populate the supplier on those documents, it will not populate it all. So, depending upon, no, again, it will also be notified to the appropriate sourcing admin, actually. So, that way, you know. <coughs> fine, not for admin, fine, it was. So, uh, they are all eligible, fine, eligible with a warning, fine, for that, whereas it is not eligible at all. <coughs> so, models outcome. <laughs> decide whether the supplier is not eligible for a what happens that placing on the sourcing document. So go to this place and click on it, and then we'll now activate it. Now activate it. Click on save now. I'm going to activate. So click on save and close by which what happens the model is also there. So all the three activities of what you are this thing. So your questions are now created. All the nine questions are created. All the three qualification areas are now created. Fine. And then one model is now created. <sighs> now what happens, what I'm going to do is, we'll now go and then create a rule set. Actually. You have to go on and create a rule set. The next activity is to create a rule set. So click on that now. Fine. So all these things are completed. Fine. Well, afterwards, what happens, you have to create a rule set. Then. Click on that. Now go there. So questions are created. Qualification areas are created. Qualification models are created. Now we have to go on and create a rule set. Fine. Click on that. So before you create a result, what happens? You know, open up one more tab again, duplicate it, and then what happens? You go there and then have a look at it. Right? Click on it. We will now open up the manage rule sets. So click on the manage rule sets, and then we have a visions rule set of SR1 actually. Visions rule set, fine. If you click on it, it won't show you. <laughs> so it's not showing you, it is not having 28 BUs now. Fine. Vision is using 28 BUs, a common rule set actually. Now for my BU, I'm now going to have only one. So remember, rule set cannot be copied, but we can visually look at it and then copy it actually. So in the next one, what happens? You go there. I will not go to the procurement. And then visually look at and make a manual copy actually. Go to the supply qualification. And then go there. Fine. Here, what happens? You will not go on that. Manually make the rule copy. Now, fine. Click on it. You will not go to this place. Fine. Click on it. You will not go to what? Manage rule sets. Now, fine. Click on the manage rule sets. So go to the manage rule sets. Fine. Here, we have opened the SR1 actually. SR1. You know that. Here, what happens? You go there. I will now create a new rule set. Now, fine. Click on plus. <laughs> I will now say it's a A01. Fine. I will now say rule set. I am now manually creating a rule set. Now, click on it. I will now take it off of it and then put on the description. You are now manually creating it. And then go back here. Now, fine. Click on it. And then here, I will now say which is the model you are going to use. Now, fine. It's a compliance for sourcing eligibility, actually. So, here, what happens? You go there. In this place, what happens? You go there. Fine. Give a tab. Now, fine. Click on it. And then the plus symbol has to come up. Thank you on it. So only when you give the BU, the plus symbol will be coming. So here at least what happens the 26 BUs are there. So we will have only one BU now. Thank you. Click on plus now. I will have only one BU now. So I will now bring only one BU. <laughs> that is the A01 BU. Well, I will now have only one BU now. So A01 doesn't have to bring it over here. So then the now the, the plus symbol will be coming. So it is BU specific. The rule sets are BU specific actually. So Sourcing qualification model, fine. Click on plus now. I will not go there and then going on the A01. We have got only one model now, fine. Click on it. I will not search for it. It will be coming. Then select it and then click on it. So, this is for compliance for sourcing eligibility. If a supplier is going to be onboarded, whether he can be put on a sourcing document or not, this decides actually. Now, what happens? You go there, click on it. 
and then you will have some what about the qualification area here so here environmental sustainability is a green initiative and then it will be always displayed actually and that will always be displayed and that come on i will now add a condition add a condition and then i will now say always display click on okay now it is the what about the uh, environmental sustainability if i click on it and then add a qualification area below this command always display thank you it is a must actually thank you on it and i will now say a01 it is the environmental sustainability i am going to add now it is always displayed and because it is a green initiative in every company fine and then it will be always be displayed thank you on apply and then click on okay and it will be always displayed so everybody has to what about the or uh, uh, meet the needs of the environment and then afterwards here what happens they have made what uh, products and services something equal to something then it is what a conditionally financial viability will be coming so conditionally here what happens you go there i will not add a condition of click on add a condition because then so response is dependent actually thank you one i will not drop down i will not we have made one a01 woman owned actually we will not use that one so we have what happens one a01 woman owned actually woman owned is there we made one a01 woman owned actually Oh God, it is not visible at all. <laughs> I made one Uber no one now. I don't know where it is now. E zero one Uber no one. I made it now. Ah, it is not coming at all. Okay, I will not choose what the business classification meant. Uber no one. So if it is going to be business no one, then operate is what equals to yes. If this business is going to be woman owned, then what happens? I need the financial visible. This is a conditional one. I'm going to. I will not add a qualification area. So in this one, what happens? What I'm going to add is what the financial viability. So that goes straight. I will not add a qualification area as what B zero one. And I make a search now. I click on search. I will not add what financial viability. Click on apply. So likewise, we can frame everything on. I click on save now. Stage. As and when you keep on doing it, what happens? Give a save form. <laughs> now it is not saving because on the fourth tab region <coughs> we have to say who is your owner, SPM owner, and then who is your internal responder. Then only we can save actually. It is not saving it at this stage now. Right? So on the main registration page, what happens? You now fill up everything. In the what happens? Always displayed and then conditionally displayed. All the things you are given now, and then we will now go to the fourth tab region. Fine. Go to the default information of fine. So here, what happens? You now say who is the owner. Fine. I will not say EMP one, and then go there. I will not say E zero one. He is the owner, and then EMP two is the internal responder, and EMP two is the internal responder. So these two guys are what happens? The owners and internal responders for this BU. Fine. So this is only for supplier onboarding. Fine. If you are going to make a manual initiative for let us say laptop purchase, fine. We can have a different owner and responder. And then for desktop purchase, we can have a different owner and responder. But for supplier onboarding, fine. They are the owners and they are the internal responders for all the cases. Whenever you want to onboard it, what happens? They become common actual. <clears throat> fine. So on a BU level, the owner and internal responder are common actual. Now we give a save. Now at this stage, it will accept it. The remaining and all fine is going to be a uh, what happens? A display text actually. Fine. Go on it now. And then the registration approval will be doing it now. Fine. We will not do it from here now. Fine. I don't know what I'm going to do it separately. And then the supplier promotion, fine. I'm not doing anything at all. So in the main registration approvals, fine. In the main registration, we are given these now. Fine. Click on it. We have now added a model actually. And then we have displayed, always displayed, and then conditionally displayed also we are given now. And then in the bottom, what happens? We are now filled who is the owner and then who is the internal customer. And then the rule set is going to be activated. So whenever we pass on the link to the supplier, he will be responding back on the persons based upon our rule set. Now, fine, click on activate. So that's it. Fine, go there. So all the setups are now complete actually. So complete setups are completed. We'll now go there and then set up the approvals. Now, fine, click on seven close. Go there. Click on it. We'll now set up the approvals. Now, fine, click on it. We'll now go there. Click on done now. So we'll now go there and then we'll now set up the approvals actually. Click on it. We'll now go to the setup and maintenance and then we'll now set up the approvals actually. So click on it, and then here what I'm going to go to the search. I will now go to the manage, find manage percentage, find uh, uh, manage percentage, sub percentage, find approval percentage. So I will now go to the manage approval approvals, find. I will now go to the registration approvals. So upon registration, what happens? Who is the approval? Now find click on it. I will now go there, click on it. And you can see something is enabled. Now find click on it. I will now go to the edit rules and then see. Now find click on it. Some only one of the rules is enabled actually. So click on the edit rules, find click on edit rules. 
happen and how look at it. Thank you. Rule always applies. This is the only thing which is enabled actually. It is automatic actually. Let me make a change now. Thank you. Got it. So it is no automatic. Approval required. I will not say approve, not approval group. I will not say single approver. And then I will not say worker. I will not say what I was say. Uh, uh, 30 or so. Right? I will not say student. <sighs> Student ama PRC 30. I will not put PRC there. And PRC 30 is a, a, a registration approval. Now. Thank you. So we are not putting it. So it will be marked to him for approval actually. So PRC 30 will be, on, will be marked and click on save. So go over there and click on save and then click on deploy. So he is the registration approval. Thank click on it. And then we need one more approval called spend authorization. Thank click on it. So go there, click on it. Not done. Thank you. So it is not deployed also. Right? It is not deployed. You go to that one. Uh, it has been deployed also. <laughs> so click on done now. Fine. Click on done. And then go there. I will now go to the what? Spend authorization approval. And click on the hyperlink on the spend authorization approval. So click on it. Now here, first one is enabled. Fine. Click on it. Click on edit roles. And then go there. It is enabled now. Fine. Click on it. It is now automatic. Go there. I will now make a change now. Fine. Click on it. I will now say it is not auto no more automatic. Fine. Go there. Approval required. I will not say what about the single approver. And then we go there. I will not make it as a worker. No, and then what about I will not say student. So it's a PRC 31. So 31 is a spend authorized approver. 30 is a registration approver. And 31 is a spend authorized. I click on save and then deploy it. So I'm going to deploy it. So it's not getting deployed now. Both the rules are now created and deployed. So 30 and 31, we have to reset the passwords also. Then click on the now, right? So now go there and reset the passwords for 30 and 31. Fine, click on it. So click on the home icon. <clears throat> and then go there. And then here, what about they go there? Go to the tools. And then you go to the security console. And then we will now reset the passwords of 30 and 31 actually. You go to the users. No, fine, click on the users. And then I will now say PRC, fine, 30, enter in now. And then click on it. I will now reset the passwords. So click on reset passwords. So the password for 30 is now done. Fine, click on done. And then I will not query for the 31. Now find 31. I'm going to go there. Click on it. You now click on it. And then these are the password for 31. So that once when the supplier makes a registration, right, whatever it will be getting approved. So click on the password. So both things are now completed. Actually. So with which we are now completed all the setups, and tomorrow we are now going to onboard a supplier. Actually, so for onboarding it, what we do is fine. Click on it. I will now go to the setup and maintenance. For onboarding a supplier, what you do is you know go there, click on it. You know what I was there. Make a search. I will now say configure procurement business model. Configure procurement business function. Here, what I was we'll be having a link available to this place. Go there. So it's a A01 is the business unit now. A01. I will not say it's a zero one. So this is the one. Choose your business unit and click on OK. So for your business unit, whatever the system is having a link actually. So I will now copy that link now. Fine, copy the link, and then we will now pass it onto the supplier. So once when you pass it onto the supplier, whatever we will now paste it and then you will now start to answer those questions. So this link will now explain you everything. What he has to answer on this. This is basically what happens with the yeah, onboarding of the supplier actually, supplier registration process actually, by the terms and conditions. Right? And get a one time access code to start actually. Right? He will now put his email ID and then it will now give a code to him for starting the registration process. So once when uh, send access code, so he will now respond back with access code and then he will now start the supplier registration. So this is how the what happens. With, the registration process will not begin actually tomorrow. On this one, we are going to have a little bit. 
So with this, what happens? We conclude today's session actually. So do we have classes on uh, Saturday? This Saturday, do you have class? Yes, yes sir. sir. You're having class now? Okay. So the, today's uh, Saturday will now begin at 2 p.m., isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, no problem. So, bye for now, and then we will not meet tomorrow. Fine, tomorrow is a Thursday, isn't it? Fine, Thursday we will not meet at 3 p.m. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. bye. bye.